Hey guys, and welcome to this video. In this video, I wanna talk about the top three data and analytics skill set to focus on if you wanna work within the area of data and analytics. Now, before I get into this list, I only have three points that I wanna point out, and I know that a lot of people have a tendency to focus on the very technical skills. And I'm not saying that it is not important to be a technical or a, have the technical capabilities to work within data analytics. Of course, it is very important and it is a big part of the job. But I also personally think from my own experience is that as data and analytics have become a bigger part of business and just been something that a lot more businesses are focusing on, it is also very important how you actually communicate your results, how you communicate what you have done, because there are larger parts of the business that actually want to use data and analytics in their daily work. So I just want to point that out because on my list, I have more of a mix between, let's call it technical and soft skills. And it's not a long list. I mean, it's top three, but still, I think it's worth mentioning that um, I, I think as the, the market is changing, I think some of the soft skills are becoming increasingly important. And I think the sooner you can become better at that, the better it actually is. Number one, I have data cleaning and preparation. Now, what I mean by that, you know, when you are going to use data for some sort of purpose, it doesn't matter if you are a BI developer, if you are a data analyst, if you are a data scientist, you know, lead analyst, report analyst, whatever kind of title you want to put, uh, put on it, you are going to go in somewhere in some sort of um, system or some uh, data warehouse, warehouse or somewhere and you are going to take some data out. Now, if you're lucky and you're taking it from a data warehouse, a lot of the data cleansing and preparation has been done inside the data warehouse. Now, of course, depending on your role, you might be one of the people that are actually working in the data warehouse. But if you are not, it's important that you are aware of that when you get data from some sort of system, a billing system, a ordering system, um, CRM system, whatever, you're going to get it out in a certain format. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that format is the format that it should be in for you to be able to perform whatever kind of task it is that you're trying to do. My point is that no matter what kind of role you want, there's always going to be some data cleansing and some data preparation. And it is literally a part of every single project. You want to expose yourself to the concepts early on and you want to do that in some sort of way where you can understand the concepts very well so that it doesn't matter if you are moving on to a different type of role, you are moving on to a different type of company. If you understand the concepts behind it, then it's just a matter of knowing where do I click in this software versus that software or what, how do you do that operation in this, in this language versus the other language. Because when you understand the concepts, then it opens up a whole lot of other opportunities. The next thing I have is I have put visualization. That is my number two on the list. And the reason for that is because data visualization has become such a big part of businesses. And a lot of businesses are trying to utilize this. They are, they are trying to make the most out of data visualization. Um, if you are trying to visualize something that happens over time, then you need to know to use a line chart. If you are trying to visualize something that is actually um, it's um, where you're grouping categories and you should, you should you see a bar chart. How many visualizations can you have on a, a report before it becomes too much for the end user? How, um, how do you use colors? How do you use KPIs? Where do you put the KPIs? Where do you put the graphs? Where do you put the filtering that the end user is using? And how do you make all of this work together so that it gets a nice look and feel and just a nice experience for the user? And you have to remember that the true, the true metric for how good a solution is or how good your analysis is or how good your prediction is, if someone, if, is if someone else can actually use it. It doesn't matter if you are the world's best data warehouse person. It doesn't matter if you're the best at um, doing data scientist stuff. It doesn't matter if you're the best data, data analyst. If someone else can't use it, it's not bringing any value to the business. And that is what truly matters. We gotta have data that is clean. It's gotta be prepared so that it's actually usable for something. Then we wanna visualize it. Now, the last one I have, I only have three points here because it's skill sets. And maybe at some later time, I'll go into the more technical stuff. Which which languages do I think is more, the most important? Um, which, which tools do I think is the most important? All those things. But I think the concept is always more important than the technical tools. Number three is communication and, or yeah, communication and presentation. And why I think that is so important is because 
a lot of those really smart things that you are doing and a lot of the stuff that you work with is actually quite complicated and it's, it's, it can be hard for an end user to understand it. So it is extremely important that you know how to communicate that and pass that knowledge on to someone else. And you need to present it in a way that it feels like, hey, I can actually do this. I can actually work with it. It's just so important that they get the right training. And when you present something, you want to make sure that you do it in a nice, cohesive way without getting too technical so that it doesn't scare people off and then make it seem like, oh, you know, hey, hey, here comes this super smart data scientist or data analyst or BI developer or whatever it is that you want to be. Here he's coming out of his technical dungeon or technical cave and he's just going to spill a bunch of technical jargon at us and we're not going to understand any of it. You need to figure out at what level can you actually try and pass some knowledge on, some technical knowledge on without it becoming overwhelming. And I think as you expose yourself to more settings, expose yourself to more projects and more, more opportunities, then you will see how important this is because the true metric of a good solution is whether or not it is being used. It's not how technically right it is solved. So that are my three top skill sets for actually getting into data and analytics and actually getting a job within data analytics. So the first one is once again, just to iterate is you need to know how to clean data. You need to have to prepare it for whatever purpose it is that you are trying to use the data for. Second of all, I think you really need to be good at visualizing it. You need to be, know how to pack it in. You need, you need to know how to wrap it in so that the end user feels like, hey, this looks great. It looks easy to use. And I love just the look and the feel of using the solution. And at the end of this, when you are trying to teach people how to use this, when you are talking about it, when you are presenting it, you need to present it at a level that the end users feels like they can do this. They feel like, hey, this is something that is made for me. And this is something that would actually make my daily job run much, much better. So that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, then please feel free to subscribe and I will see you guys later.